Oh my goodness. It's all going wrong. I'm not that strong. I should be strong enough to, to do it. I can do it. Uh, for the thumbnail. Can I even get them all in the shot? No, I can't. Oh, they're so heavy. You don't know. I shouldn't be lifting with my tattoo. Ah, Hi, hello there. Welcome to the disaster that is an actual casual video here on Casually Comics. I get asked all the time, what's on the shelf? What's going on here? And I don't often talk about the books that are behind me and that just occupy my life space. Because if they're here, they're all special. Either because I really like them or I don't like them, but they're important, so I feel like I should keep them. <laughs> Lots of reasons. But I thought I would share with you some of my favorite omnibuses. Omnibuy. Omnibuy makes it sound more scientific. I'm gonna put just some of my general all-time faves. I'm gonna put time of recording because they can alter. It varies and the organization is odd. I'll put up a very upsetting picture of this one shelf. Look at it. Why aren't they together? Why didn't I put them together? I don't know. I thought I would share some of the omnibuses that I really like. See if you like them, if they're for you, and just hang out and chit chat. Be actually casual. Live the channel name for a moment. We were supposed to do this in a chair. Same with the comics code reading. In a chair. The chair has not been built yet. The saga of the chair. You know, the best laid plans of mice and men and chairs, but it's all good. Let's take a look at these omnibuses. I'm Sasha and I actually did hurt my arms lifting that up. That's so sad. Should have planned it better. And there is a way that you can get better at that because planning is a skill. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes by a wide array of instructors with a focus on creativity and self growth. If you're interested in expanding your skills, there's a class on here for you. Are you interested in learning how to start a YouTube channel or the technicalities behind SEO? Then there are classes for you. I'm I'm always looking to improve and to try new things, so I took a fun class about creative camera framing by Jordi Vanderput, a YouTuber who I also took a class about color grading on and liked, so decided to see what else he had done. I like this one too. In fact, I utilized some of these tips in this very video for some fun dynamic shots. With Skillshare, not only can you choose your classes, how long they are, you can also choose your instructors, leave off at any point because they're broken down into chapters, and there are no ads, so they're perfect for if you have a busy schedule. If you're interested in joining and expanding your skill set, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now that you have the avenue to get some more skills, let's take a look at some of these omnibuses. I didn't even put them in the proper order that I want to look at them at. I'll get some B-roll and then they'll look nice. Like, ooh, ah, uh, B-roll. <laughs> not helping me get b-roll. So the first one I'm going to show you is Deadpool and Cable, or as it was called when it first came out, Cable and Deadpool, because this was back in the day when Cable could still get top billing before Deadpool's popularity exploded. Then they used him too much and now he's oversaturated. <laughs> it's okay, poor Deadpool, poor Cable, just yeeted out of the top spot. So as you can imagine, this is a team up between Cable and Deadpool and it is just their adventures. It's 50 issues. It ran from 2004 to 2008. And in the middle of it, they're just derailed because of civil war and it breaks up their friendship. They actually call it a divorce inside and it's devastating. I miss them hanging out just together with no angst. Well, less angst. This omnibus collects all of the relevant portions. It even has the Dear Deadpool letters column, which was really popular back in the day. People said it was super fun, one of the best letters columns. I think it helped with Deadpool's popularity because he would talk to you, break the fourth wall. There is a period where Deadpool was viewed as very endearing and him and Cable bounce really well off of each other. It's a good time and the adventures are just completely off the wall. At one point, Deadpool has to rescue a baby Cable from Mr. Sinister. It's good too because for the most of it you can just read this which was great because when I picked this up back in the day I did not know anything about Cable at all. This series made me like Cable which is really funny because as I got more into comics later on I realized that in the 90s Cable was everywhere and I was just late. I actually picked this up because of Deadpool. I had picked up a random Deadpool comic just because I thought that he looked cool and I liked the cover. I still have it. I still have a whole wall of Deadpool over there, even though I don't think I've ever talked about him. Where are you, Deadpool? Here he is. It was this one, the one that just starts in the middle of Secret Invasion. Yeah, Skrulls? Skrulls, it's been a while, yes. And yeah, I jumped in and I just picked up from there. You know, the whole thing about every comic is someone's first is 100% true, but also you can kind of just jump in. If it grabs you, 
you'll be able to pick it up, especially these days, because the internet, you can just go look. When I first got this, that was an option, and I actually didn't go look. I just kept reading. I was like, I'll figure it out. It'll make sense eventually, and it did. This one's great. This one is 52. After Infinite Crisis, reset the multiverse, and DC's doing another crisis event coming up to it, time recording, so it's really funny because it's like, everything will change again. But after everything changed, this was a big everything changed because in 1985, they had collapsed the multiverse, then they brought it back, and then this series spawned out of that. This was the Trinity took a year off. They didn't want anything to do with anything. That's why on the cover you see their her makes it look like they're dead. They're not dead. That's this year, time of recording. So this series really let the B and C list heroes have time to shine. It was really great. Oh, I opened right on the page of Billy Batson going insane. Fantastic. This series is a great showcase for so many characters. It's the arc where Renee Montoya becomes the question and that towards passing is just handled really, really well. You get to see Batwoman in here, like the recently redone Batwoman before they then just brought back the original Batwoman and now there's another Batwoman. It's just, ugh, so much is happening. What this is a really great showcase for is Booster Gold. This is a great Booster Gold story. It's one of the reasons that Booster Gold is one of my favorite heroes is this story. This is where I was introduced to Booster Gold, the already matured booster gold not the always regressed back to being a glory hound booster gold i won't spoil it because this whole thing is a mystery but as it went on it shifted from just focusing on the heroes doing stuff to setting up the next event which would be countdown to final crisis and then final crisis and now none of them will matter except they all will omniverse they're reprinting this one i don't know if they'll be exactly the same but one of the fun things about getting omnibuses and why i like them so much is they often come with all of these extras like this one comes with some script panels there's less than some of the newer ones have but that's an okay trade-off because some of the newer ones what they do is they don't give you all of the issues and they said they give you all these extra pages which is cool but then they can milk you for a few extra dollars which you know you know that's what they're doing. So if you're interested in any kind of like B, C tier, like this is a really fun one. It does take a little bit to get into because it's so lore heavy, but I don't know. I, I loved it and I come back to it all the time. That's kind of the criteria for these ones. They're ones that I come back to and revisit. As addictive as any good TV series, says Entertainment Weekly. That sounds like a backhanded insult. <laughs> That's not as flattering as they think it is. That's actually super mean. Why are you mean like that? There's also great Black Adam stuff happening here. I love it. I, one of those things that I enjoy so much, I'm not even articulating properly and it probably sounds really, really boring. All right. Oh, he's dusty. He's a dusty boy. Oh, Animal Man. The Grant Morrison issues of Animal Man. This is from the 80s revival where they brought Animal Man back and then Animal Man was important because he was the Silver Age character and nothing really happened with him. And then they revamped him and gave him edge and social causes. And this book got very meta and it was interesting. At the time when I picked this up, I had not read anything like it. And so that helped it very much to stand out. And there's that interesting balance of Buddy and his life with his family. And I'm not over the new 52 for breaking up their marriage. It was him balancing his powers and going on these really interesting adventures that tied to these themes of vegetarianism, veganism, animal rights, all of that. Reading it back these days, it can get a bit heavy handed at points, I will admit. But at the time reading it, it was just very, very interesting. And to see all of these, again, kind of B, C tier list heroes interacting in this way. There was also some really interesting meta stuff with the psycho pirate and, oh, this is a great panel. This is a great panel of Martian Manhunter just coming into their house. This is a very plain Jane kind of omnibus in that it's just the issues, but that's fine. Sometimes that's all you want if you're just collecting and you just wanna read them. That's the great thing about having these. You can just plow through and it's either if you already know that you like the issues and you have them all together, or if you're just gonna check it out and you have some extra cash, then you can really get a feel for it. And if you do like it, then they're already there. And if you don't, well then you can resell it for a decent amount when it goes out of print, which happens a lot. If you keep it nice, unlike me, because I can see that people have gotten at this. There's stuff on this. This one does get Get pretty self-indulgent at the end i have to say when animal man meets the author and then they talk it's one of those things at the time it didn't read as such to me but future sasha reading it as a full full adult feels kind of like oh that went a bit a bit far but it's still good his haircut at the end is not good i miss his early book haircut the one thing about omnibuses or omnibuy is that they are expensive they're steep you have to be really interested in it but i think they're worth waiting for i prefer getting these than getting the 
monthly. It's just a different way of collecting, especially because there are so many runs and so many things being collected from so many different eras. Sometimes it just makes sense to pick them up in a chunk if you can. This one is a newer one, but I'm very excited about it. <laughs> It's Moon Knight. I took a picture of the Moon Knight and then on the back and then it was backwards in my community tab because I'm that person. I'm so tech savvy. That's why I have a YouTube channel. This one is pretty cool. It collects the early era of Moon Knight, but it only goes to issue... 20? Yeah, it only goes about halfway through his 80s run and then the other half is collected in another book because it has all the beginning stuff with World by Night and the Defenders, but I have a bone to pick with it because they don't include the entire last issue of the Defenders where he explains the trap. What they instead do is they kind of amalgamate it and they do this panel where they just combine those last few things into it and it just feels very abrupt it's just like here have a few pages of this defenders issue so if you were reading this and you were enjoying that defender story too bad you get the last few pages but at least they include the beer can escape because that's why this is here <laughs> this one is really neat because you really get to see the evolution of moon knight and just how much he changes and just to have it all in a row like this is very stark when i did the video talking about Moon Knight. We've been going through his evolution. One of the things someone brought up is that, you know, back in the day, he would have been on the newsstand and then eventually for the direct market, but it changed. And it was a different way of collecting. It's interesting. And sometimes it can be hard to remember that from a modern perspective because you're so used to just seeing them only in places like, well, for me, bookstores. But this one is a great omnibus. I have to say, if you like behind the scenes stuff, it has so many extras. It has interviews. Speaking of the direct market, that pause there was me flipping through the page and looking at Bill Sienkiewicz's art, which is really nice. They have a bunch of splash pages back here and they're very beautiful. If you like looking at pinups and the like, they're so nice. Here it is, the note to discriminating readers. <laughs> I think they should have used the word discerning, but that's just me. This was the page where they said they were going to sell this in specialty stores. I have to read you some of it. It's so good. A note to discriminating readers. If you're not discriminating, you can skip this page. He's unique. He's daring. He may be the first great hero of the 1980s. I love that. Don't count his werewolf by night stuff. Just start at the 80s. In fact, unless a doozy comes along later, he may be the only great hero of the 1980s, but it kills me to admit this. He doesn't appeal to everyone. People who pick up magazines only to massage their eyeballs with seem indifferent to him. He's special and his fans are special. So we're making his magazine special. Beginning with issue number 14, it'll have more of everything discriminating readers want. And by that, they mean they're gonna sell it inside of a specialty store or a comic book store, but they're gonna hike the price. But don't worry, they're gonna sell you on that too. Later on, ellipses. All this without a lot of advertising cluttering up the works. The price, oh, hardly worth mentioning 75 cents. Press X to cry. I wish. Discriminating readers know that you have to pay for quality. Can you imagine if they pull that out now? Like, hey, it's $10. You have to pay for quality. Oh, uh, that's so good. I love stuff like that. Personally, I would actually just buy like back issues of the comic book journal and back issue itself and all that. I love that. I love those interviews and those kind of things. It's so cool. Someone make an omnibus of just that or just the letters column. And there's one more. This one is more to represent a type of omnibus than the specific one, although this one is fun. It is the Bronze Age Batman Brave and the Bold from the period where it just became Batman teaming up with people. If you've been collecting comics for a while, you'll find that there is a point or a period you tend to gravitate to where certain characters, as you can tell from this pile, from me, it's a lot of B and C list characters, but also this era is very interesting, particularly if you're a fan of watching the evolution of canon and continuity and people coming to care about it. Even in something as simple as, say, Werewolf Jimmy Olsen, people start to be excited to see things recur and we're writing in it was building. Canon and continuity do have many rewarding facets. Sometimes there are negatives, especially if people get too involved, they can get very pedantic or people get too wrapped up in it, but it can also be immensely rewarding and sometimes those rewards aren't espoused enough. It can be very, very fun. And watching the evolution of it and people coming to care for it in that way is very interesting, as is watching the manipulations of the code and seeing how people have to work around this actually written set of rules. There are still rules people have to work around, but they're more unwritten and they vary more from place to place. But this is very fascinating and watching it lose its hold and seeing when things come in, what can and can't be said, how people joke about it. Zuvembis, even though that's Marvel. This one is very fun. You have all the old cuts 
covers. Alas, you don't have the letters columns, which is always sad to me. That's why it's so fun to see them in the Deadpool issue because they're interesting and they showcase how fandom has remained very similar across time. People don't tend to realize how similar fans and fandom has remained, but just the ways that it can express itself has changed. Oftentimes there's this differentiation or this line that people draw in between themselves and people in different eras or places, but there are also lots of commonalities. Of course there are differences, but there are commonalities as well and they're fun to explore too. There's something comforting about reading some of the letters from back in the day and seeing that some of the concerns are exactly the same. I found a great one in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen the other day. I'll read it for you. Dear editor, I enjoyed the story The Fattest Girl Metropolis in your annual, which tells of the time Lois Lane became very fat. I love Jimmy, but wouldn't it be fun to see him as a fat so? He'd be very cute, Ellen Gray. The response, you must be telepathic. Such a story in which Jimmy becomes the fat boy of Metropolis is scheduled for the next issue of Jimmy Olsen Comics. But as to whether or not he's cute with a hundred extra pounds of blubber, you'll have to decide. <laughs> what are we doing this over <laughs> What's happening? See, so yeah, I wish those were there. There's not much to this except for the issues themselves, but it's fun. And the ones like this, the Silver and Bronze Age, you can just kind of pick up and flip through, which you can do with the others, but it feels more like you can do that with some of these older ones because they're more episodic in nature, less interconnected. Although, of course, again, you can do it with the newer ones too, especially if you're very familiar with the run. Here's one of the fun covers. Oh, something that my daughter made me is falling out. Look at that. It's a hand deer. Oh. Let's move this over here. This is a bookmark. I keep the kids' things as bookmarks. My husband said that I was dressed as a military space punk pirate today. I don't think it was a compliment, but I took it as such. Also, I did Euphoria eye makeup to be hip with the kids. Am I hip with the kids yet? Probably not. I'm here talking about comic book omnibuses. <laughs> the purchases of these Omnibuy are often very spontaneous. They're things that I see that they're all collected at once. And after years of failed collecting or the collection's gone wrong where things go out of print or I'm missing things and it's an eBay battle. No, if I see it and I can happen to get it at that moment, I tend to. And I do like having them all in one chunk. I know some people very much prefer the monthly collecting, but I do enjoy just having it in a hunk and sit there and just chonk at it chonky. It's not for everybody, I know. Some people really love their long boxes. With the bronze and silver edge ones, I really have to fight the urge to not just become a channel that just reviews only single issues of those. It could happen. I'm walking that knife's edge, keeping it from happening. A fan sent me this wonderful box full of all these great single issues, and there was some Elastic Lad Jimmy Olsen in there and everything. And, oh, it was much appreciated. I just need to fight the urge to not just become a channel that reviews only that box. <laughs> There's, of course, much more here. If you enjoy just these random kind of snippets or looks at things, let me know. Hopefully you found something that was interesting or maybe you wanted to talk about one of these runs that you liked or maybe you want to check one of them out. <laughs> I wonder if they still have this as Deadpool and Cable. It'd be so funny if Cable got popular again and then they had to reverse it again. <laughs> then you could sell it special edition like I had it when it was Deadpool and Cable. So as always, thanks so much for hanging out. I want to do more fun, casual things like this and they'll get less rough and smoother the more that we do them. Please do all the YouTube things, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification even though it doesn't always work, and tell me one of your favorite things. It doesn't have to be an omnibus, it can be a single issue, it can be digital, it can be a statue, whatever it is that you like. Tell me about it, I wanna hear it. Thanks so much for taking this time today to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.